Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to a brand new episode. Wars episode reviews. We're on series five, Heat D. Um, last time we uh, had Heat C, which was actually not too bad with S3, and this time we have a uh, Heat, which is annoying because it has Firestorm in it, but oh well. Um, joining me is the uh, Dominus Ignis. Oh god, I'm on another one of these. Hello everyone. Good intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not keeping you hostage, don't worry. Uh, yet. Please, yes, please send help. No. Go back to your cellar. And <laughs> also joining me, of course, is good old Tenty Jester Owain. Dab. What? Dab. What? Dab. What? I'm like a bat of the hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. And when the night is over, like a bat of the hell, I'll be gone, gone, gone. And like a bat of the hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. But when the day is done and the sun goes down and the morning light shining through. I love that song so much. Thank you for that intro. That was beautiful. Hey. <laughs> I realize I can't sing for shit, but... Fuck it, do hey. I sing good in the shower? In fairness, neither, neither can I, and I sung an entire parody video, so you know what, I don't <laughs> care. Um, but yes, this is Heat D. Um, it's not the best Heat in the world. It has actually, has actually one really, really good, good battle in it. Um, it's the only battle that isn't one-sided as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, every every single first round loser for the moment had a pretty um, shit time <laughs> in its first round battle. Um, some of their own fault naturally. Um, but we'll get into those. Obviously, they'll be last, of course. Uh, of course, the winner was Firestorm 3. The heat winner. Not uh, was, there any, was there ever any doubt? In fairness, they didn't have a very hard heat this time. <laughs> um, no, they really didn't this time. No, I mean, the only bit of the C was Gemini, and they always get stuck on their back, so... And they did. Why is it with Firestorm and having crap heats? I had, Actually, in fairness, it's heat O heat wasn't too bad in Series 3. That's um, the weird thing, though, is, like, <laughs> Firestorm's a really good robot, but it seems to not often get paired with the best robots for it. No. Uh, I mean, in its first battle, it almost got... It's his flipping arm broke. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Matilda's oh, got a we'll very get to that. <laughs> Matilda's got a very strong flywheel. Yeah, she shows off to a few robots in this heat, um, but, again, there's very much we can say about Firestorm, because it's literally the same... As it always is, pretty much. Well, like. I mean, they did they did say that they strengthened the armor. I believe it went from three millimeter aluminium to five millimeter. Didn't stop it from being one hit KO'd by Hypnotist, though. No, <laughs> <laughs> that was that's probably its worst showing ever. I, I know that obviously it's not good enough nowadays, but like. How thick is armor nowadays? Because I feel like it's probably a fair bit thicker nowadays. Uh, I have no idea about thickness of armor. I mean. It's that's not my area of expertise, unfortunately. If anyone knows, <laughs> please let me know. Because the moment I heard that, I was just thinking. I've always thought Firestorm looked, you know, quite like a thickly armored robot. But I guarantee that's like nothing now. Oh yeah, yeah. God no. I mean, at this time, it was still. It's, it's one of the best robots as has been stated a few times. One of the best robots to never won a competition of anything like by itself. Definitely, absolutely, definitely. There. I mean, it's a real shame, but. Hey, they, they, they do a good performance this series as well, so... They, mm, they're a solid performing robot at the very least, which is always nice to see. And they made up for Series 4 at least. Which they didn't yeah. Get, well, they, they did alright, but their heat was terrible and they, did, they, they got lost on there too, so... But, it's because they changed the colours back to what they it was before. Yes, it is, because they had the inverted puller scheme in Series 4, which looked really weird. <laughs> and... I can't look at the Series 4 version very often now. I'm like, nah, I just, I'm just too used to the, mo the white. <laughs> the uh, yellow wedge and red back. It looks weird the opposite way around. But <laughs> I guess that's really it with Firestorm. I mean, again, we've talked about it a billion times. That's the problem with a lot of these Heat winners in Series 5, is that we, we've talked about them a lot for the most part. Um, with like, exclusions like S3 and stuff, but apart from yeah, that... Yeah, well, I guess that's really the thing, is like once you once you found that winning formula, you know, there's no reason to really go and change it that much. <laughs> Yeah, well, you say that. Look at Wild Thing in Series Six. Yeah, oh, we, Christ. We don't talk about Wild Thing Series Six until Series mm -hmm. Six, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but um, the surprising Heat winner, which is one of those robots I would not have seen as like the Heat finalist, just by 
initially, I guess, from its uh, performance in Line Series 4 was um, Reactor 2. Um, I think they did really well on this series. Uh, they, this heat. It was like Prize Fighter, wasn't it? How yeah. they just came out of they came out from not doing too well in the last series to suddenly just getting to a heat final. Um, it was very impressive. I mean, they they earned it. I mean, god damn it, their fight against Gemini is the best fight in the whole the whole heat, and one of the best fights of series five in my opinion. Um, it's, it's just not really saying much, though, is it? I know it's not saying much, but you got to admit, considering that it was Gemini against Reactor Two, it shouldn't have been yeah. that good. <laughs> it had no right to be that good, but it was. Um, you got on one side two robots that weigh half the weight of usual robots, and on the other side you got a robot that's literally shaped like a teardrop and has all of the empty space. Yeah, shouldn't be a good fight, but it is. They did that very British thing of putting two weapons on it. Like the axe was <laughs> um, there. <laughs> I mean, I don't really, see, I didn't see the point of having. They could have made the flipper more powerful by substituting the axe, but I mean. Um, I, I guess I know where TR2 got its inspiration from. The Pum Hacks. <laughs> it, was, it was stolen from Series 3 Behemoth. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Which everyone forgets had axes at one point. Oh, I, yeah, I forget. How, how can you forget? It was in all of the games that Behemoth appeared in. Yeah, even, oh. in, even, in, even in the Xbox version of the game for some yeah. reason. I don't, for some, I don't know why. Because based on Series 4 but and 5, but whatever. Um, but... Reactor 2 was a nice little surprise, honestly. Um, the, the, the only thing I have to put issue with is its little stat board. It's the biggest advantage, apparently, was it's fast and agile. No. Ah. Oh. No, this thing was just... This whole thing was relatively slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean most, most of its battles consider it spinning round in one spot and flipping, using its flipper. <laughs> That's kind of its, that was its main strategy in its heat. I mean, it got to the heat final, granted, but I mean, it was some decent driving at parts, but let's say it didn't beat Bot Hour Hell because it was fast and agile. <laughs> oh, God, no. No, it, <laughs> beat, it, it beat that robot for many other reasons. <laughs> but, um, and because they had a limited CO2 supply, they could last a full, like, four minutes or so with that with Gemini, so. <laughs> How the fuck do you have limited CO2 supply when your robot is literally the size of a wrecking ball and has all that space in it? I don't know. And the thing is, the flip is relatively weak, because it, I mean, it can flip over something like Gemini and stuff, but or like Bar Hell, which is quite top-heavy, but when it came to, like, Firestorm, it could barely lift, like, when it got underneath it. And it wasn't like, it didn't have that punch, I guess, pardon the pun, that Prizefire had. Like that thing, like <laughs> that thing launched like the alien up, uh, upside down and got a few good flips on um, a lot of good flips on wild things. So, but you know what? I like Reactor Two for what it was. Um, I think they failed to qualify, didn't they, for Series Six? I think. No, they failed. Even though know, they were valid heat finalists in the last wars, and in Series Six they had a flywheel. Oh, that same was it. Yeah. With, yeah. Same with Atomic. They failed to qualify for Series 6, yet robots like Tridentate and Short Circuit succeeded. And... Uh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They came, up, they came up with Rhino, though, in Series 7, and that... Why? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it only got through because Supernova died. Oh, that's made me even more depressed. That's the only reason they got through, because they were getting, like, bullied by Stor Storm 2, so... I, I don't know, but... Yeah, uh, for what it was, uh, Reactor wasn't too bad, I guess. Yeah, Reactor, Re Reactor's an alright flipper, to be fair. Do, do it's, just, it's just it's, it wouldn't stand a chance against something like Firestorm. Well, it didn't. You, 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 see, you see those robots um, who people talk about, like, they, they were the best robots not to make it to the semi-finals, you know? Robots like Smidzy and Supernova and robots like that. I think Reactor 2 should be put on that list as well. Personally, really? Oh, yeah. It it, it was good. It was I, th I mean, it was really good, and no one talks about it. No, I think it was good, but I don't. I I, I personally wouldn't say it's semi-final worthy. Personally, I mean, I, I don't know. It's not again. It's not bad. I would have put Prize Fighter more into that category than um, Reactor Two, but fair enough. I mean, it's, it's still a yeah, good robot. Not, yeah, it's an alright robot. I don't know if I'd say semi-finalist, but I will agree at the very least. It is a Damn, it is like a very good robot for the time, certainly. Yeah. I it mean, just it's... got put up against a robot that 
was yeah, at the end up yeah that was like really really good <laughs> yeah speaking of really good robots of course we have sir chrome a lot oh yeah with with the flipper <laughs> oh you boy really just say that uh, I just said that yes, and I regret everything all my life choices right now. But the um, kettle, the kettle with the soda stream bottle on top of it, with all the um, word art plastered all over that. Oh god, you could tell that was just done in PowerPoint in like ten minutes. Oh, god, I, I, lo- I love the <laughs> Chrome Lot team because their robots not very good, but at the very least they're fun to watch. Yeah, like the Plunderbird team. Oh, I love the Sir team. I just can't stand their robots until Series 6. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at, at least this time they actually managed to put a proper weapon on it. <laughs> at least a, <laughs> some kind of weapon. Cause, I mean, you series... call that a proper weapon? Well, compared to Series 3 where they had tiny little spikes, in Series 4 they had a drill that bends and some kind of lighthouse attachment. I still don't know what was how that's supposed to self-ride them, but... It didn't work. <laughs> no. And then in series five, at least they came. At least, at least for the first time, they actually had some kind of active weapon that was gonna do. Could have done something. I mean, it didn't didn't do anything, but you know. You say that if you look on the wiki, there's a picture of Sir Cromwell from series three with its original weapon, not the spikes. It had the giant overhead bar spinner. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Now that would have been ten times more it, amazing. It, it had like a propeller head, like bar spinner over the top of it like it was literally like propeller head except round it looks so it, it actually does look like propeller head <laughs> oh jesus like there's no weight to that bar though that's the thing but that would have been 10 times more interesting than the wheel hub we ended up getting in series 3 but yeah <laughs> yeah so chrome you gotta love these guys i mean it's I mean, it's such a shame that steve merrill's gone but you know they left behind such a legacy <laughs> of Somehow making this relatively boring looking robot become so much more memorable because of the team. Yeah. Like at least yeah, think of it think of it like this. Plunderbird and Sir Chromelot aren't great robots, but when I when I looked back on YouTube a year or so ago and saw Plunderbird versus Sir Chromelot, I was like, fuck, yes, I need to see this <laughs> fight. <laughs> it was quite an undwelling fight as well. <laughs> After all, though, it didn't it... live up to their legend and power. Cause it, we... was, it was it was literally all hype and no fight. Yeah, because out of out of the three like famous like um, show you know the kind of show voting teams like you know you know Sir a lot and uh, Plunderbird and I guess also with the full sportsmanship you have Deertor. It has the least interesting designed robot out of the three. Like the, out of the robots, is probably the worst because Deertor's relatively consistent. And at least at least Plunderbird have actually made a semi-final in their lives. But yeah. Oh fuck. <laughs> so... Oh, I just remembered. Oh what? god, what have you remembered? Plunderbird making a semi-final. It was against magic, magic <laughs> it was against Enzyme and Mule, so you know. Oh, come on. I love Enzyme for what it is. Really? <laughs> I do. Oh, oh wow. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so, uh, uh, ended with Bo Wayne. F- f- <laughs> first, first psycho killer, and now Enzyme is your f- robot. I don't know what it is about me and crap robots. I like crap robots, but, but mine tend to have it more like design to them than just wedge <laughs> and black <laughs> don't box. Don't get it. Like, <laughs> there's another crap robot in this same episode that I absolutely love. We can't say the name of yet. Well, but... I love I love it as well. I mean, it's. But awesome. I love it to the point where I've commissioned an ant way to be made out of it. Oh yes, we'll get to that one. So oh, we'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll get to that one after we've talked about the other uh, second round losers. Of course, the um, other state seed eighteen for the series, um, Gemini. Uh, Gemini by this point was a little bit outclassed. Is it me or were the flippers more powerful in series four? They were mainly because I think robots were lighter in series four. Like I think. 80 odd kilograms was the max still around that time because I mean the creature was only about 80 kilograms or something and Tornado was relatively light as well so yeah it was I mean it was impressive in series 4 I mean the actual I mean honestly to this day it's still the first cluster bot in Robot Wars so it's it has its legacy but in it's series... sad. I was expecting I was expecting more from it to be honest, like because it is a pretty good cluster bot. But yeah, the flipper just wasn't performing this time. And I'm not sure why. They couldn't even get rough rough Dougal over. I know that's yeah. saying a lot. And that thing's basically just a frame with a flywheel inside it. So it, it, the thing yeah, is, 
the thing was, I thought at first, okay, maybe it's just because Rough Rough Dougal has a wide base, but then the reactor fight happened, and they were struggling to get that thing over. Yeah, I mean, they it's just down to the weight increase, because Gemini didn't really change much. I mean, they, they they went from about... They added about 20 kilograms extra onto it. So each one only got about 10 kilograms more inside them. And the flippers didn't seem to change too much in design. And they had that... Also, they had the um, infamous bar on the back of the robots that got them stuck in every battle. Oh. <laughs> Those bars caused them to lose to fucking napalm. Yeah, if you lost... Right, if your track wreck... I mean, in, 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 in total, they lost to Razor... In Series 5 and Extreme, Razor, Napalm, and Reactor 2. Only one of those seems credible <laughs> to a degree. I mean, at least Reactor 2 is not too bad, but losing to fucking. The Series 5 Napalm as well, not the Series 3 durable. Series 2 and 3 durable one. Did you just call Napalm durable? Hell, it, <laughs> hell that thing survived against, that thing survived against uh, Sir Killalot and Stegosaurus. Really? I think you should look at it. I think you should look at it at, it, at durable. This is less. Like Firestorm durable, and this is more like Sub Zero durable, where you'll tear chunks out of it, but it'll somehow still be moving. Yes. This, this is literally like the. Uh, it's still technically moving at the end of the fight, that means it's still alive. Durable. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, come on, it's Napalm. Give it give it the victories it can have. Like, <laughs> come to, on. To quote, to quote Mike, Mr. Psycho 2, when he watched Stegosaurus vs. Napalm, it looks like it's been in a fucking car crash. It was. <laughs> <laughs> If you count, if you can count Stegosaurus as a car, then yes. But generally, yeah, the fact it can lose to Napalm is a testament to how shit those bars were. Because the irony was they were supposed to help the robot self right, and in turn they just got stuck every time. <laughs> Um, I mean, to the point where in Reactor's Battle, one of the Gemini twins slipped itself over onto the bar <laughs> and just got stuck. Like, Why what... didn't they just make those bars retractable? Yeah, that would have been ten times better. It would give right. it. Stop it! Stop it from wheeling. But when it falls on its back, the bar just folds in. Yeah, or make them rounded, like a kind of like a round, like make it flat towards the base and make them rounded a bit. So it's like you've got like a rounded, rounded back then, instead of just having it as like a pointy. Like, it looks like something you like a coat hanger or something. Instead, it just it just made it way too awkward for the robot. Um, I mean, I still like Gemini for what it is, but it's just it was obvious by Series Five that it got outclassed by the weight increase, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even like Cluster Robots, I mean, like, um, not Cluster Robots, I guess not Cluster Robots, they're more multi-bots now, like, um, in the case of Crackers and Smash, they still didn't really, they were still always outclassed still, so. To be fair, though, Crackers and Smash always had the most toughest opponents ever. Yeah, they're like Big Nipper and Carbide and stuff, so. <laughs> and, okay. Yeah, and fucking Apollo. Yeah, okay, fair enough, then, fair enough, but... I, I will say to be f also to be fair to Crackers and Smash, when Carbine was hitting one of them, I believe it was the smaller one, Crackers. It seemed like the armor was at least durable enough, you know, durable enough to take a few hits. That's good old Hardox for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whilst Gemini looks like it's made out of plastic, it just looks like it's plastic. Oh. But it did get that really nice popping sound when Razor cut through it, which is that was satisfying. That was very satisfying. It's like it was like bubble wrap, but um. Yeah, Gemini, again, love it, but... Yeah, Series 5, if you can lose to Napalm, that you, there's, there's something wrong with the design. <laughs> and this is why the last time we ever saw this team. Oh, That's never, how they go out. <laughs> yeah, they go out to Napalm and Reactor 2. Oh. I know. It was actually quite an embarrassing defeat, because they both end up on their back. <laughs> They're just stuck as their finale. I mean, it could be worse. It could be Panic Attack where you get flipped out of the arena, so, you know. <laughs> or hit the disc. Uh, at least one of the Napalm twins... Well, uh, well, fuck. At least one of the Gemini twins still survives to this day. Oh, yeah, that's true. At least we've, got, we've got that still. I, I'd actually like to see a heavyweight version of one of the, the twins, like, made. Be quite well, we've cool. got that. It's called Apollo. I know, but, like, in that similar, like, mace-looking design, though, I mean. Like, the kind of the way the bar lifter and stuff. I think you could make it work if it was a uh, heavyweight. But just being more powerful. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the robot. I know Wayne wants to talk about this robot because <laughs> I, I have no idea why I love this robot so much. I of... just, I just fucking do. Of course, it's Rohog. <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, <Rohawk! laughs> I fucking got you. <laughs> we'll get to that one in a sec. I want to get Rohog out of the way because it's, it's. Hey James, you're yeah. adopted. Oh no. 
Oh, well, I don't care. But yay! <laughs> <laughs> I, they, they love me regardless. <laughs> but yeah, Rohog is one of those cases where it actually doesn't look terrible. Like, if you just looked at it... Like, compared- if, you look, if you looked at it at first glance, it doesn't look bad. But then when you realise what the fucking thing is made out of... And the fact that it knocked itself out by driving into the arena wall. Yeah, it's made it's fiberglass, isn't it? Because the way Matilda just shredded through it. Yeah, and the base plate just bent like it was just made of spoons. Yeah, the unique flipper, which at first I thought was just like lifting forks like Panic Attack, but when you see it in the battle, it like lifts. It goes forward, lifts up, and then goes back in. A bit like um, that tongue that um, Robo Pig had. It's like that, except. Slightly sturdier, but still couldn't do jack shit. Still doesn't do what it's meant to do. No, and the hila- the hilarious thing is that this thing could only lift sixty kilograms. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently, because the, apparently they um they because they failed to qualify in series four with basically the same design, and I think they must not have adjusted it for series five. But even then, series even then, there's 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 still twenty kilos off. They're actually 12 kilos, yeah, 12 kilos away from the weight limit from Series 4. That's pretty... I mean, I'm trying to think, they can't even lift B Capitator. <laughs> they can't lift B Capitator. Christ. Oh. oh gee. And that's the lightest robot on this heat as well, and they couldn't even lift it. So they actually went against probably one of the least effective robots, at least, and they still killed themselves. I mean, that's the thing that that's the thing that kind of gets me, is, like, it's a nice-looking robot. Like, it looks kind of sleek, but... There's a you know, it doesn't matter if you can't do do the job. I mean, you see, you look at robots like Tartan Terror and Immortalis, and you just look at them and you think, yeah, they're gonna be shit. <laughs> they're shit. But then you look at Rohog, and it actually has something going for it. Like it actually is kind of sleek and it has that. It's, it's, it's something. But then everything oh, you, else. You, you see Rohog, and you think, oh, that's gonna go really fast. That's gonna go the speed that push to exit does. And the lifting forks are going to be like panic attacks, and then it just craps itself. Yeah, and also, I think, I don't know why, who's writing these stat boards? Because these were as sleek and quick. This, this thing's like eight, <laughs> it's like, it's like, was it like eight miles an hour or something? That's not quick. <laughs> was this the same guy who um, wrote down uh, Juggernaut 2's weapon as an axe? Yes, probably. <laughs> oh, Christ. And, and, wrote, and wrote down in the Robot Wars Extreme Manual that Chaos 2 had an axe and spinner. Mind you, it must be the same guy in Series 3 wrote Chaos 2's flipper as a flip-up. <laughs> 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 Which is still the stupidest description for a weapon ever. But And also and also the shitty crop job on the Shredder from Last Heat. But he must have done that as well. But yeah, Rohog, it's crap. It really is. It's definitely in the top ten worst of, this, of the first lo- round losers. Particularly because it has at least a design going for it, and it still ends up being arguably worse than something like Hippopotamus, which is really sad to say. <laughs> Hippopotamus actually <laughs> survived its fight, and also didn't also managed to take a few hits from Disco Inferno before dying. This thing just ran into a wall and died. So I have more respect for a plastic sand pit than I do for Rohog. To be fair, though, Tentamushi is a plastic sand pit. Yeah, and that thing's done way better than this. Yeah. Oh, that shit. thing beats Stinger. Nasty Warrior's done more than this. <laughs> Just like that sinking, they've actually got a win. <laughs> Against Hitno Disc. Yeah, of all robots as well, but they could even beat Sir Chrome a lot. So Jesus. I mean, this isn't this is that's setting a bar for yourself, isn't it? It's like the more you talk about Rybot, the worse it gets. I know. It's just oh, uh, let's just well, let's just want B Capitator. I, I tricked Owain, but I want to make it up for it. B Capitator. <laughs> Yay, B Capitator. Why the fuck do I love this thing so much? It's the <laughs> derpiest shit ever, and it's brilliant. <laughs> I love derpy robots. To be it's, fair, it's, it's literally got giant googly eyes made out of sieves and bouncy balls, and it's wall-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> None of its eyes face the right way. I know. And it's, I fucking love it. I want, I want to also ask a big question. Like, is that a light? Like a lamp on the front? No, that's a drill cutter. You know, those, those things you attach to drills and they um, drill giant holes into concrete walls. What? That's, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I thought the spike on the bottom was the drill. It, it's got both. It's got two... Holy sh- I thought it was like a light. <laughs> no. What the fuck? That's actually the we- actually part of the weapon. 
Holy, yeah. holy bollocks! That's amazing. <laughs> it, it's got it's got weapons that fucking coincide with each other. Like uh, Ivanhoe's weapon had a lance, but it also had an axe. Oh my god! When you compare so the lance would, so the lance would poke robots away from where the axe was landing. When you're comparing it to Rohog, <laughs> I mean, in terms of compare, I mean, this thing's actually better than Rohog. Oh God! Wow! This is, this is amazing. This is an amazing comparison. I know. Compared to Roy, it's got the similar, uh, roughly the same kind of body shape, almost like a slight wedge. But this thing is actually kind of better because it's got, unlike some robots, it's got personality, which honestly makes up for how rubbish it is. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. If your robot's not going to be very good, at the very, very least. Give it a personality so that we can remember it. <laughs> yeah. They could have easily just made this thing a grey box with a pointed wedge. I, th I think I remember saying that once to James. It was just like, imagine if you'd ima imagine if Decapitator had just been a, just a regular like robot with no personality. Boring we would, as we hell. We would forget what it was even called. Exactly. Yeah, but and also it's got one of the greatest names ever. Yeah. Decapitator. Yes. But of course, also, there is... Um, Certain thing about we mentioned about the ant weight. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I commissioned Anthony Murney of Antweight Anarchy fame to make me an Antweight Decapitator. And we have pit. We have a picture of it, which is pretty. It looks. It's pretty dead on. Yeah, I love it so much. It's so it, good looking. It's literally a Robot Wars Hexbug Builder Bot with a shell over it. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys want to see more like this, you should check out Antway Anarchy on Patreon and give them some money. Yeah, Aww. check them out. In fact, I'm actually um, obliged to say check out Antway Anarchy because um, this is an announcement. I'm now officially a member of Team Penny. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, the that's an announcement that I'm making now. Hot damn. The, un awesome. the unpredictability of the Jim Dramatic podcast. You find <laughs> something new out every time. You'll, you'll learn all the great greatest scoops ever. <laughs> So, so your boy, so your boy Tenty is now an official partner of Antway Anarchy, and it feels absolutely fucking amazing. That's amazing. That is. And also, for once, they actually got the stat board right. Poor, yeah. we poor weaponry. <laughs> and also, also yeah. another, also another thing to mention. I think another reason why I love this robot so much is because I think it's made by James's distant ancestors. <laughs> Apparently so. Yeah, John <laughs> Captain is called John Nicholson. Yeah, one of the few Nicholsons <sighs> in Robot Wars. Yeah, and he later worked on Hose After Bad. So that's a yeah. good CV for you. Which then later became uh, Crazy Coop 88. Oh, God. So, oh, although, although John wasn't part of Crazy Coop 88, he was only part of Hose After Bad, but someone from that team in turn then made that. So, it's uh, it's weird. It's like, it's like if you, you can connect B Capitator to. Crazy Coop 88, I love it. <laughs> Crazy Coop 88 is, is, is actually a perfect example of the point we just made about how, like, if your robot is just a colourless box, it's what you end up being forgotten, because I sometimes forget about Crazy Coop 88. I mean, that thing died running into dead metal. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, what are you going to do? But B Capitator is one of the greatest robot names and one of the greatest silly robots of all time. Like, it gets forgotten because robots like Deator, which are well-deserved, but give some love to Bcapitator. It deserves it's, it. It's also the robot that inadvertently caused the most visible damage to Firestorm. Yes! Very, <laughs> very technically. That is Because it almost caused Firestorm's flipper to come completely off. I love the way... Well, the I, I'm saying that's not Matilda's flywheel. That was all Bcapitator. <laughs> Matilda was just there to... Just because the producers didn't want to give the Capitator the respect it deserves. <laughs> this is the real controversy, people. If you had justice for the Capitator, <laughs> if you look really, if you look really closely, its drill caused the damage. It just it was just too fast. <laughs> you just, it was a blur. <laughs> you have to run. You have to run it at like quarter speed and close your eyes, and then you'll see it. <laughs> yeah, you'll see like a kind of like hidden message. Find the clues, kids. Find the clues. But um, next is um, possibly one of my favourite stupid robots of all time. I, like it's. Not on par with um, Owain's love for B Capitator, but I I love this thing. Come on, its its name is also just perfect. Rough Rough Dougal. I was about to say the way you were describing it, you could have said either one of the next two robots. That's the thing. I it. Yeah, but Ro I love Rough Rough Dougal. It's, I mean, its greatest enemy was the Steam Jet. 
Oh. How, how, how could you not love Ruff Ruff Dougal? It's I, literally Dougal from the Magic Roundabout. I think that was one thing that was lost on Mike during his live review, that he just saw Ruff Ruff Dougal and went, what the fuck's this? Because he didn't I'm know what Magic Roundabout was. Yeah, Magic Roundabout's like a UK thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the only... The only thing that they have of Magic Roundabout is like uh, apparently some shit reboot film called Dougal. Oh no! Actually, oh no! Actually, did was, it, didn't Dougal. Magic Roundabout originate from France? Uh, I think so. Yeah, but the the, the the Dougal one you were talking about that was the American dub of the Magic Roundabout movie that we came, that from the UK, and it was redubbed in America. And I think I'm not. This is I'm not even shitting you not. The guy who created Fairly Odd Parents wrote the script for it. <laughs> I mean, oh, I, know, no. I didn't watch either dub. So no, I, no I, 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 I actually saw the old one, like on VHS somewhere. And I've actually seen the American one, and my god, the American one is awful. <laughs> Did you like Lee, oh, Lee oh. Evans is in that film. Yeah, he's in that. There's a few other people. I think isn't Bill Bailey in it or something? I yeah, think. yeah, and and Ian McKellen and stuff. There's like a few British celebrities, but the American one is so like overdubbed, like you know how American reality TV shows are. But oh, b- back to actual, back to actual robot, rough rough Dougal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's got it's got an adorable little coat. <laughs> that little, little skinny plaid coat it has. I I gotta ask, I gotta ask, how the fuck did Ruff Ruff Dougal and King Buxton not team up in the tag team Terror for Extreme? I know, because um, for fun they're fact, they're both named after Magic Roundabout characters. Yeah, I was actually gonna say, like, fun fact, that's that's the yeah, that's that's a connection between Ruff Ruff Dougal and King Buxton is that King Buxton was named after a cat from one of the Magic Roundabout movies, I think, oh or something. Oh my god, I didn't know that. No, because I was t- it was the first time I ever talked to Simon Harris, and I asked him where the name King Buxton come from, and he said basically when he was applying for Series Two, he just come he just thought of that name out of nowhere because I think he just randomly thought of Magic Roundabout or something because he. Either- am I the am I the only person who actually knew that without looking at the wiki? Because I watched a lot of that Magic Roundabout when I was very little. I think so because I didn't know it until Simon mentioned it, so I, I had to look up the character when we were talking to him. So when I was younger, I watched a bit of Magic Roundabout, but I wouldn't have been able to know that at all. I've literally- I can barely remember it. I've literally only seen the intro and the movie. That's it. So I have. I, not I, seen the I show. watched a lot of kids shows when I was growing up. Like, <laughs> I, any anyone who knows me can tell you I have like a like a computer memory of like just useless trivia when it comes to TV shows. I have the same thing, but you you gotta love Ruff Ruff Dougal's weapon, the flywheel spin, spike. It's like a little tongue. <laughs> Why didn't they, why didn't they just have the flywheel? I don't know. I mean, the funny thing is, apparently the flywheel was supposed to stabilize it, but it just wobbled all over the place. So I wouldn't really call it stabilizing. It's just the weapon just made it shudder all the time. Um, uh, and also the possibly the funniest thing about this robot, apart from the fact it's called Rough Rough Dougal, um, is the fact that <laughs> do you remember where the removable link was? Oh god, yeah. Oh, pit's ass. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> That's where they it, it fell out when they got they hit the pit button, and then I think the uh, Gemini flipped it, and then they moved Link got dislodged or something. But yeah, it's actually in the little uh, above the tail at the back, underneath the tail. Sorry, yeah, right um, in there. It's like Jeez. it's like uh, the backstage and like uh, the Gemini team just look over to their opponents and like, what the fuck are you doing? And then they're just like, oh, we're just turning our big giant dog on. Yeah. Oh, to, oh no. <laughs> to quote to quote to quote Mike in his live review, he said, um, "In order to turn the robot on, you have to give it an enema." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Fisting, I mean, fisting the dog much, just to get in. There's not much worse link placements, are there? No, I think that's no. probably the wor- I think that's probably the worst link placement outright, and I love it for it. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't think so. I think the wizard or the witch, whatever. Oh, the, uh, the oh the has that award. Oh, the witch with the hat knocked it off. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty. No, yeah, that was pretty bad. I mean, r- r- at least in series six, Ruff Ruff Dougal got a kind of like he got like a kind of red. Ironically, got a red dwarf cat treatment with like the pink fur. Yeah, but um, it didn't. Oh it, my it, yeah. god! I just realised something. What did you realised? We, we we were talking about the flywheel spike earlier. I think I know why they did that. Why? Google up magic roundabout the train. It's got the same like giant wheel. With the handle thing, I'm I'm pretty sure that was accidental, but it looks identical to uh, Ruff Ruff Dougal's weapon system. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. I think, I, I think that's the reason why they did that. I didn't know that. I've not seen much um, Magic Roundabout, so uh, you're our Magic Roundabout trivia expert for today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I only watched it when I was little. I haven't watched it for years. If I remember all, it's just amazing. <laughs> Hot damn! But I love Ruff Ruff Dougal. It's still heavier than. Decapitator somehow, um, 
but it, it's kind of a big robot. It's a big robot, but it, when you look at underneath it, there is a lot of empty space. Yeah. So I was quite surprised how much of it. I mean, most of it must be the decoration and the weapon. The weapon, the flying one, will take most of the weight up because it looks massive and heavy. Can we can we talk about how DIY the robot was before we move on to the final robot? Yeah, it's made out like, of scrap, it, isn't it? Yeah, its head was a motorcycle helmet, and it was covered in mattress lining. <laughs> It, it looks like it's made out of asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's its secret weapon. Everyone just fucking dies after inhaling it. <laughs> oh god! In series six, my god, it just that whole thing set on fire. So that's a health hazard, boy, and you know, a bit of a uh, suing guy, buff mental one right there. But I feel uh, like that. I feel like that setting on fire moment gets kind of overshadowed by Deator and Granny's revenge. But that's an amazing moment as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's why we it's why we didn't see Derek Foxwell much afterwards. Is because after the match, he, his lungs had just turned purple and his veins were just like fucking protruding from his neck. <laughs> to breathe. That went dark quickly. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> a li- a li- also, one thing is before we move into the final robot, um, the ears fell off because the ears jet vent. Which yeah. is one that I think probably one of um, three, ro- uh, one of two or three robots that actually got seriously affected by anything to do with that steam vent. Like, didn't it kill one of the tetanus robots or something? Yeah, it killed tetanus in series five later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. It, it just drives over the steam vent and the steam vent shoots up and you just hear this thunderous noise and it just stops moving. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 2 nil to the um, steam vent. <laughs> Right now, it still beats out the disc, which only killed one Dutch robot. So I think it was Run Amok, I think. Run Amok, uh, I think. Yeah, it's Run Amok, isn't it? It's not built for combat. Yeah, that's one. That's one that was put in the tree, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because Run Amok ran onto the um, spinning on the spinning wheel and then died. And so... then the owner just put it in a tree, and it's still there to this day. Yeah, I love. I imagine. I really hope the Rough Rough Two guys still have like the little helmet with the uh, face on it. I hope so too, but I, I don't see it likely because it was burnt pretty badly. If you want, if you want to really get um, not be able to see Ruff of Dougal the same way again, the nose is a giant mouth. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I've ruined it now. Oh well, that's just... It's just a giant sex doll. Oh god! Oh, god! Oh no. god! <laughs> Sca- oh. Scary, the scariest thing ever. But yes, yeah, so let's go to the final robot, of course. Which oh is... my god! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. oh my god! Oh my god! I just, I just googled Ruff Ruff Dougal. This is important information. I just googled Ruff Ruff Dougal on Google Images. Um, this, this picture is dated back to 2015. It looks like they still have it. Oh my god! Really? Really? 2015. So, uh, just over three years, or well, three years ago. So, might not still have it, but I'm sending it to the Skype chat now. Right. Oh, that's brilliant. I'll have to put answer the review then. Oh, wow. I like I like this live update. You're, you're adding a lot to this review. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. Oh, it's been put out to rest now. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like it's a garden ornament now. Oh, it's still cute, though. Anyway, yes, the final robot on this heat, which is in the thumbnail, um, and one of the best puns ever, of course. I'm, is... not, I'm not singing again. No, of course not. It's bot out of hell, um, with quite an interesting story, set of stories behind it. <laughs> um, of course, one of the um, the kid on the team, Daniel Sloss, became a uh, comedian later on, and is still running around now. Uh, and he uh, was, I think, he was like ten when he was part of this team. This team is split off from the same team that belongs to uh, Team Talk. It was one half, one made hippopotamus, and one made fi- one made uh, bot out of hell. What a great! Which was the better robot? So, you have five seconds to guess. I, it's kind of sad that this one's the best one, but yes, yeah. um, that giant wheel on the front, which was their weapon, um, it was actually stolen from a oil rig um, that's supposed to be cut through rock, um, <laughs> and for some reason it wasn't allowed to be used. Which I don't get because Hypnodisc and Supernova and Sus S3 and later on like Typhoon. I kind of understand that because it, it was a giant disc used to cut through rock, hmm. and Bot Out of Hell looked like a botch job at best. In fact, so I really imagine think that... If that disc was spinning at full speed, it would stay on the weapon mount. Yeah, I imagine that would have been like a cl- an old day apex if we if they'd have let that happen. I suppose so. I mean, yeah, it was spinning. You got to see it spinning it when it came into the into its um, starting gate, but that was after that they had to turn it off, which is it. It, it would literally be like the robot version of Beyblade. 
Yeah, and also, fun fact, uh, according to Daniel himself, his dad um, stole the breastplate from Sir Killalot. Wait, what? There was a, I, I can't which fight it was. It was a fight in the Extreme or Series 5 where the breastplate as a killer fell off. And apparently what happened was, after the uh, thing, um, his dad, Martin, said to like the people of the engineers, like saying, oh, you're doing this wrong with like, the house robots, doing this wrong. And they said to him, do you want to help us out? And he helped out with driving the house robots and fixing them and stuff. For a week. He actually drove to kill lot in some fights, and then one. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, and then another fight. Yeah, the breastplate fell off to kill lot, and I can never remember which one it was. But I know it happened around this in series five in extreme, and he just took it, and apparently it's still in the basement. <laughs> oh <laughs> just, my god! <laughs> it's still just there, apparently, which is fucking amazing. That is actually. Um, <laughs> uh. And and also to quote Daniel once again, apparently after this fight he cried because he was a um, he was emotionally mature according to himself. So um, and he's ten, so I don't know. Is that too old at this point? Uh, to be fair, I I used to blubber my eyes out constantly when I was a kid. So I I can't I can't fault him for crying. <laughs> nah, fair enough. I'm not uh, that I'm not that heartless. I mean I mean I mean people give um oh, what's her name from the Alien team now she's uh, dating Tom Brewster and is on the Monsoon team. Oh um uh Sarah Sarah yeah, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah people, Asplund. People, people, yeah, people give her a flack for crying and like. She's a kid. Yeah, she wasn't a kid. Uh, <laughs> she's, a, she's a kid. Leave her alone. I know. Not, not anymore, obviously. Hmm. But... I mean, nowadays, I would... You know, okay, come on. <laughs> I mean, by how hell, admittedly, its biggest problem was the fact that it was so top-heavy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, holy crap, this it, thing... It was way too fast as well for it being so top-heavy. I know. And it, it looked like a robot that was just going to fall over any second. And it it just I mean reactor didn't have to use its flipper it just rounds the wedge and fell over. I mean the wedge it had to it used its wedge a little bit it's like the, it gave it a little flick but most of that was like onslaught most of it was just them running up to them, and the flick was the final flip over. Um, yeah. I can't tell was that was that like a fire extinguisher on it that was like the exhaust? <laughs> it looks like one, or like some uh, kind of air I'm, horn or something. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to Google it. I don't know. Fun. What what would have been awesome though is um, if they had self writing handlebars. Oh, that would have been cool. <laughs> that would. Jesus. Uh, actually, it'd be quite or... cool if um, the little figure was able to self write them. Like his arms yeah. moved out. It would be cool if he got out, set the <laughs> thing upright, and then just got back on again. Like a GTA, <laughs> you just flip the car back over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, also, fun fact the little fella on there is a pun on Meatloaf. He's called Metal Oaf. Oh, <laughs> oh. Really? I know, isn't it just beautiful? Uh, <laughs> no Shremek was its weakness. What a surprise. Uh, I mean, this is probably uh, one of the worst oh, feats I, I, for I, I, it. I, I, I tell you what this, uh, that red thing should have been. It, it, uh, when it was flipped over, that red thing should have just opened up and bat wings came out of it. Oh, that would have been cool. And it's self righted that way. <laughs> also, a robot looking like that, having no Shremek. <laughs> Oh my god! I know. I mean, you got to admit though, it's a pretty cool design, though. Like, yeah, yeah. it looks pleasing. good, but unfortunately, that's all it really could do. But I love the fact they made the saw the front wheel. That's just <laughs> so cool. That just looks so good, and it looks just like a, like a little motorbike. It's it's. I, don't know, I, I think it's just cool looking, but it's. I mean, I but... do I do like I do like to sometimes see just non you know robots that look good but aren't practical in the slightest. Like it's one of the reasons why I still like Nightmare so much because it was it's never going to win battle bots, but it's always just fun to see it appear. Yeah, yeah. All I... robots nowadays like Terra Turtle. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. yeah. Terra Turtle when it retired. Oh, I I, I was legitimately upset when it retired. I was just like, no. My dear, it did get the fuck crushed out of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do, eh? <laughs> At least it made Big Nipper explode. Yeah, that was true, yeah. But yeah, but on hell, impractical as hell, but also really cool as hell. So, And also it gave us a comedian out of it, I guess, so... It's he's some... actually legitimately funny. I've seen a lot of his stand-up. Yeah, jo Daniel Sloss is pretty funny. Um, yeah. I, I've I... seen him on Russell Howard a few times, and I've seen his stand-up tours, and I actually saw him live when I went to see Russell Howard live, and 
he's actually really funny. He was only yeah. 18 when he started doing full up comedy. So. I know. And also, I, I, it's on the wiki as well. This picture because it just show off because it's Daniel. I love this. It, it's, I'm stealing a joke, but I do like it. It's, it's about about an uncle who always quotes Bible literature. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you three. Three, John, eight thirty-two. I can do it with other random quotes. If you want to know what a man is like, look at how he treats his inferiors and not his equals. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, page four ten. I can't say. It's, 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 I don't. Know, I, I stole the joke. I'm. I'm. I'm not apologising because it's a good joke, but it was definitely Daniel Sloss. But yep, yeah, time to talk about highlights of round one. We've talked about a few, of course. Firestorm. Um, being eaten by the decapitator, obviously it wasn't Matilda. Um, <laughs> it, it was, it was, <laughs> it was quite, it was, it was quite a bad hit because like the first fight, Firestorm's in the main competition, and it already has its weapon lopsided. Yeah, like I, I think that just goes to show you how powerful Matilda's flywheel really was. When Firestorm is easily one of the better armored robots in Robot Wars, and it just gets its flipping arm buckled like that. At least they fixed it. I mean, although you could see throughout the entire series, its flipper never really went back in again properly. <laughs> yeah, but like my point, my point really is just like you know, like if that's how powerful it is against Firestorm, think about some of the other robots. Imagine if Bot out of Hell had been hit by that. Oh god! Imagine, uh, if, imagine if, uh, why didn't Hippopotamus get hit by it? <laughs> it, would, oh, it would literally be like Rotator versus Ice Wave. There would just be shrapnel everywhere. <laughs> Imagine, she, imagine she had it against Tun to run. If he had, if he had the flywheel back then, fuck me, mad oh. robots. Oh. No, I, I, I tell you what, it'd be like, it'd be like the ending of Infinity War, just dust <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> I don't feel so good. <laughs> also, one thing maybe like the aliens are dead. <laughs> the first flip that Firestorm did, because that was the second flip. The first one was just was kind of funny because it just kind of rolled onto the arena floor and, and back onto its wheels. Yeah. Like Bcap's like, holy shit, I'm still alive. Okay. <laughs> and a terrible Jonathan Pierce quote Be beautiful. We love to see damage like that. <laughs> hey. I don't believe it. Oh, behave. Oh Jesus Christ. I'm, we're stuck we're stuck in this loop. Let's just talk about Rohawk. Oh no, it died. Never mind. Because it's <laughs> Rohawk came along and it died. That's all <laughs> you can really say about it. The end. Once what? again, once again, Thanos Mario World credits play. <laughs> <laughs> Thanos just snapped his fingers and Rohog was one of the unlucky victims. Yeah. Uh, Actually, no, 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 no. Scrap that. Uh, Thanos snapped his fingers and the hamster running Rohog from inside the robot was the unlucky victim. <laughs> I love that. He's got, so he's got really dumb quotes this here. Like, in the Reactor 2 fight, he says, Bot, back to hell from whence you came. In the, oh. rough, in the rough, rough Dougal fight, he has two. Ear, ear. What happens then? <laughs> And it, the fur is flying. It's a dog's life, isn't it, Dougal? <laughs> Jonathan Pierce, I love you, but please don't say stuff like that ever again. No. And Ruff of Dougal just got yeeted out of the arena by a kill a lot. I, I love the fact that it wasn't even, like, a, it wasn't even counted out or anything. <laughs> it just pathetically dropped out of the arena. Also, like, also I just remembered when, uh, the, the, oh god, Rubot, wasn't it? Like the one that looked like a computer mouse. When it died, it just cut to Redbot, and I, I wouldn't even be surprised if that wasn't even from the match, and they just added that hidden to add a little more depth to the match. Like, oh, it got counted out, so they're just dying straight away. Yeah. <laughs> also, it shows you how good Sacrolot was made. That it, even Rohawk just bumping into it knocked something off it. Like this, <laughs> this random piece of metal just fell off from somewhere, and I don't know where where it came from. I don't yeah, even know what it was. was. Dad just nicked it. Yeah, it's like a nut or something, but the fact Rohog managed to... Rohog's technically done damage, most of it to itself, but, you know, there's <laughs> something at least. Oh, bloody hell, this this was a mess, this first round. Every single first round loser lost pretty badly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the second round, though, at least gave us um, the piss-easiest fight Firestorm's ever had <laughs> against Sir Chromalot. I mean... 
I mean, th there's not a lot you could say except that it was just like Firestorm came in and was having none of it. They just came in and just tossed Sir Chromalot out to the point where they couldn't even like make a song and dance of it at the end. They just had to say, "Yeah, we just <laughs> we got dominated." <laughs> yeah, the fact that well, the thing about the flip was like it was like a smooth flip. It kind of flipped it over, then it rolled back onto its wheels like they had some chance, and it just rolled back again. Yeah. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the flipper didn't even help it. Not a chance. No, I mean, honestly, Steve Mel's face said it all. And he was just like, oh, really? <laughs> like, two seconds. What did we expect? I know. I don't, I don't know what I expected either. I don't know what anyone expected from this fight, really. If, I mean, if Sir Cromlot won, then... Jesus, I don't know what. Sir Chromalot would have... I just like, want to imagine Sir Chromalot winning, like, Robot Wars, and how the hell they would have been like, last time on Robot Wars Series 5, Sir Chromalot went, to, went on to victory. Bear, bear in mind, in Series 4, this thing was seeded. So oh, yeah. Christ. Wow, the lighthouse got seeded. It was seeded even though it barely beat Shellshock and then just died against Big Brother. It would do. They got there for the comedy value, I believe. I mean, the lighthouse got seeded. So what are you gonna do? But yeah, Inver Invertebrate didn't. Logic. But uh, Panda didn't. Yep. Logic. Yeah, true. Panda Panda wasn't even in there. <laughs> no, they just kind of just barely appeared in six stream. Um, then of course the greatest fight of this heat: Gemini and Reactor Two. And that's not a joke either. This is actually a really good fight. It's possibly yeah, I actually top looked, 10. After you two were like saying how good it was, I decided, okay, I didn't watch the whole fight. I wa So I watched it back. And I was like, oh, this is actually really good. Did you literally just watch it as we were talking? I watched it just as we started the call. And after you mentioned it, I was like, okay, where is it? Wow. <laughs> Rude. God. <laughs> I mean, just considering the fact that Gemini couldn't flip over Ruff of Dougal, they did have to get some decent flips against Reactor 2 in the opening stages. Like, they almost got them stuck on the back, but a little bit of flailing about somehow got them to self right. Like, I don't know how they self right. I think just the axe in combination with just flipping and driving eventually got them to self right. Um, it, but... it, it, was, it was literally like a fat man who fell over just trying to get back up. That's like me trying to get off a comfy couch. <laughs> like, like, I'm not the fittest person in the world, but I think that's even then. If I'm if I'm getting too comfy, I just can't. I can't get out. I'm trapped. I'll just live here the rest oh, of my life. Oh no, I'm, I'm trapped here forever. Oh, oh no! <laughs> uh, don't don't save me, Joe. Save yourselves. <laughs> this, this is my life now. <laughs> but, save yourselves. Just the... hand over the turkey twizzlers. Oh god, Turkey Twisters. God. Jamie Oliver just like comes and just beats you up for it. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Do you think Jamie Oliver was stopped Robot Wars on BBC and was like, oh, people are sitting down to watch this, that's not healthy. Ban Robot Wars. You'll probably have a heart attack the fact that Wayne's like a delivery driver for fast food and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. Oh, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, actually, actually, this is a true story. I very, re I very often look behind as I'm driving, and there's just Jamie Oliver holding a meat cleaver, running off the car. <laughs> you can never escape your demons, away. <laughs> it's, it's like you look out your window, you see him just slowly approaching. Like he's never running; he's just walking slowly. <laughs> like he's, he's, he he's always stop. He's always walking the same speed towards you, but he, but he'll never stop, even when you stop. So I literally <laughs> just finished my PTSD training to try and forget it, and now you guys bring it up again. I'm so sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay. As a reward, let's talk about the fact that Gemini managed to kill itself. <laughs> oh, well, it's the, right. Because actually, when that's I the reward. I mean, the fact the fact was when I first when I was trying to remember this fight before I watched it today, like for the podcast. I I th always thought that uh, Reactor got the first flip on Gemini, and then trying to self right, they got stuck. But no, the first one of the Gemini twins tried to flip. Reactor missed it entirely and just flipped itself onto its back. It's it's phenomenally crap. <laughs> and the thing is, was the first time they managed to get away with it because the other twin managed to self right them. But then the second time, it must be running out of CO two or something because the other one's just not flipping as much. And then Reactor got one of them over, and then got the other one over, and they just just sat there, like it, it, pretty much in the same position they were when against Napalm, which is. Really sad. I feel like Owain's yeah. hoping that Jamie Oliver kicks down the door and the hell and just ends this misery. <laughs> <laughs> it was miserable. But to its credit, up until that point, it was a relatively back and forth fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although admittedly Gemini were winning it, once that bit once the once the second half started happening, 
it was downhill. The Series 5 version of Gemini was actually working. Yeah, it actually worked and got some flips on a robot as well. They actually were able to tip it over. But it was very, very well controlled by React. I mean, it, it just knew exactly when to use the flipper and stuff, and it... They didn't panic. No, it I didn't. Mean, that, is, that is one good thing about, like, robots. You don't need to have, like, the most powerful robot. As long as you drive it well enough, you can take on some pretty surprising opponents. Yeah, that, that's that's what I like about some of the newcomers, or, like, the robots with lower experience, like Price Fire and Next Heat. Like, just, you know, you, you can do it. I mean, in Series 6, admittedly, it just feels like Series 5 on repeat. <laughs> but at least got 13 Black and Don, Tom Keir, and Terahertz. Yeah. That's like the only, they're the only three new ones, weren't they, I think? Yeah. Yeah, everyone else was back again. <laughs> um, but, apart from Chaos 2. But, yeah, it was uh, a very, very admirable display by Reactor. It was such a shame that the Heat final, they were just completely owned. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, Firestorm literally just looked at them and was like, okay, back to the entrance gate with you. Yeah. Actually, this is the first out the arena by a front flipper, isn't it? I think. Uh, not only the first out the arena by a front hinge flipper, but also the first out the arena into the entrance gates. Oh, that's a point. Yeah, because a few robots like, like Hydra just sort of went flying onto the onto the arena f- you know, wall and then flew into there. But Yeah, and Rhubarb nearly went into the entrance gate as well, very nearly. Yeah, <laughs> doing like a plunder burn, breaking the re- the gate. But it was actually, it was, almost, it was very, very kind of um, like General Carnage 2 flip, where it just kind of flipped and just rolled over the arena wall. Like it almost wasn't even out of the arena. But at least this one was actually cool to look at. Yeah, it was actually quite cool. And also it was a first, so at least that was something. Yeah, because it, it balanced on the arena wall for a good, what, two or three seconds before it finally toppled? Yeah. It, my favourite one is still when the uh, spawn again got flipped out. <laughs> balanced on the arena wall, and it's like, nope, you're, you're coming out this time. But it was it was quite an easy fight for Firestorm, because Reactor 2's flipper, while it was good against something that was like 50 kilograms, like Gemini, or Bar Hell, that's really top-heavy. Firestorm, yeah, 100 kilogram robot. It's not going to lift Very it. well-designed robot at that. Yeah, and very low to get under. Like, very few robots can get under Firestorm from the front, so... It, it was very ahead of its time back in Series 3. Oh, it was. I mean, really all it needed was that big panel flip, and it was just sorted from Series 4 onwards, really. But... And, yeah. it's, still, and it's still the best front-inch flip we ever had. Yeah. Sorry, Team Aztec. I know, it, we, we wanted it to be, but unfortunately Firestorm has the pedigree. But... Yeah, it was very. Speaking, it was of, a, um, speak, speaking of Team Aztec, have you ever noticed that I've just been, I I literally noticed this like last week. Do you ever notice that push to exit looks like a blue challenger? It does actually. <laughs> hey, the more you hey the rip off. Oh, <laughs> Aztec, honestly, what are you doing? It's, uh. it's literally a blue challenger with a flipper. <laughs> yeah, it is, and. Oh wow! There's people are ripping off everything today. Honestly, <laughs> James later is going to be like, "Oh, why won't Stephen and Anthony talk to me anymore?" <laughs> oh wait! Oh, it's because I called their robot a ripoff. Fair enough. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, Reactor Two didn't really stand a chance in this fight. <laughs> I mean, they they lasted all of about what ten seconds before they got flipped over. <laughs> so, which is better than Sir Chrome Block, which is not much in any way. But oh well, at least made a heat final. And they came out with Rhino. Uh, I know. But, oh, um, out of 10, what would you give this heat? I'll give it a no power of 10. A no power of 10? It's boring! <laughs> only that... one good fight! Yeah, the, the only thing... It's really a really cool looking robot that just failed miserably in the first round. <laughs> Be Capitator. Yeah. But, aside from that, I just... I, it, it's it's it. I swear to God, it's the episode that I always see when it's on challenge, and I just end up forgetting about it every time I've seen it. It's not too memorable, is it? <laughs> no, nothing okay. happens, and it's the curse of Firestorm having crap heats. Except series three. <laughs> yeah, except series three. But in series four, it, we don't talk about that heat. In series five, it had the really boring heat. In Series 6, again, no competition, only Exterminator, and they did fuck all. And then in Series 7, Ripper was at least competition, but they got thrown out of the arena in seconds. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give it by a 5, to be honest with you. It's just average. 
the only thing that makes up for it is some of the funny designs of the robots. That's really it. <laughs> yeah, um, I probably agree of you know five because like you know stuff like Bot Out of Hell and Decapitator are yeah you know, and Rough Rough Dougal are like fun little designs, but Gemini underperformed. Um, <laughs> Sir Chromalot was there, which is a fun team, but not a great robot. Yeah, it it was really Firestorm that made that heat, really. Yeah, imagine if it'd been something like a like um, a relative lower tier one, like th- three like uh, three decks to heaven. Oh, oh god! Oh, oh jeez! That would have been the worst heat ever. And Gemini probably would have won. <laughs> That's the thing. Sure, sure. And you list down all those things then, and it's just made me realize this heat has everything it needs to be one of the greatest heats of all time, and yet it just fails on every single level. It has everything it needs. It has Decapitator, <laughs> and that's it. it. That's all it needs. <laughs> yeah, it, ha- it, ha- it has the really good robots in Firestorm and Reactor and Gemini. It has the really crap robots that always go out in the first round but look good. It has the Sacromalot team. It has it has everything it needs to be good, and it doesn't. It's not. No, I mean overall, out of our scores, has been ten plus no part of thirty. So you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> but um. At least we have um, some okay robots in Heat E, um, barring a certain one that I know is a certain fight that is going to happen in it. Oh god, that, yeah. I remember that fight made me scream on ah. a podcast once. Oh, Jesus. I mean, obviously, let's go through the uh, robots quickly. Obviously, have Wild Thing, the ninth seat. Yay, back. Wild Thing. My Yay. favorite version of Wild Thing, actually. Really? I prefer the Series 4 version, because I'm not a big fan of the disc on it. Because I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose of the wedge. Yeah, that's true. But this was the first version of Wild Thing I saw. So. Oh, that's fair. That's fair enough. I mean, it's not a bad design. It's just it's way better. Nothing, nothing can get worse than the Series Six one. Oh uh, yeah, true. But I think like, I just think it, series... it went from a wedge to a reverse wedge, and they wonder why they failed. Mm. Uh... And they still won their heat <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Vader broke down though. Vader broke down. Two five nine failed. <laughs> that was really the only reason they won. They didn't win their heat, they survived their heat. Yeah. Um, the then, of course, one of the, um, also one of the, um, in a similar vein to Reactor 2, Prize Fighter Mac 2. Surprisingly decent, <laughs> considering. I mean, Prize Fighter never had much pedigree prior to this. Um, they all, the only thing I remember about them is being in that free for all match in Willie B. Cheese's heat, <laughs> where no one won. <laughs> That that was just a beautiful disaster. That fight. I mean, the only reason they lost is because they just died. They were dying. <laughs> that was it. Willie B. Cheese didn't even deserve that to get through, and they somehow won. But Prize Fighter, it did a lot better this time. Yeah, you know, all three versions of Prize Fighter that appeared on TV are still around. I know, and it's, oh. it's a shame about the uh, Series Eight version that had the electronics broken. Yeah, otherwise we could have actually seen them in Series Eight, and that would have been brilliant. That would have been I really actually cool. Would have. It's hmm. a shame. Actually, mentioned them before because of um, Sarah, the alien, who Sarah is now uh, with the uh, Tom from um, Monsoon. Yeah, she's actually Tom in a relationship on. with Tom Brewster. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I like I like the idea of the alien. The the, the bars just never did too much. I no, if the bar was a bit more powerful. I'd say it would it would be a semi finalist at least. I mean, it knocked out Velociraptor. That's but you know. <laughs> That's Velociraptor. It knocks itself out. Uh, you watch. You watch your whore mouth. <laughs> that, that robot went on to become Mighty Mouse. All right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive. <laughs> I, I prefer Ironside, but whatever. But yeah, the, the, this it's self right was its biggest problem this time because it just yeah. didn't work. Um, then of course Napalm Two. The great uh, moving Yay! On. Napalm Mo- Two. Moving on. Woo! Yes, moving oh, on. Gosh. Fuck Napalm 2. Moving on. Thermidor 2. Yay! <laughs> their f- Actual good robot. Their worst performance yet. I mean, even the crappy one in Series 3 got past the first round. Thank- no thanks to... Sergeant Bash got the knockout. <laughs> yeah. Sergeant <laughs> 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 Bash got the knockout. Oh. Christ. I mean, it's funny. They flipped themselves oh. over and died. No, they they flipped themselves over. Then Sergeant Bash went na 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 na, and then killed them. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> oh, Thermidor. Sergeant Bash went full ass blast and just bit down on their ass. Proof that Thermidor <laughs> need 
doesn't need Philippa Forrest to get in. <laughs> <laughs> Official. Oh no no no! They'll, they'll just um, they'll they'll just uh, be sexist towards Philippa Forrest. Uh, oh sorry, I forgot that's what they are. They're complete sexist. And, and say say uh, she shouldn't be in Roll Wars because Roll Wars is for girls and yeah. <laughs> it could be worse. In Series Six, they lost to Stinger because Stinger randomly hit one of the wheels and locked it up. <laughs> to, be fair, to be fair, though, that match also had 13 Black in it, so I'm glad Stinger and 13 Black went through. Oh yeah, I'm glad there, but it was kind of a shitty way to go, yeah. <laughs> considering. Um, then there is Warhawk. <laughs> uh, oh no. yeah, I, the robot. The real big dogs are coming now. The robot. I, I that's they say big hogs. Oh shit. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Jokes. I, I feel dirty because this robot would go on to be in one of my favorite matches of all time. Oh, was it in the series six one? Yeah. <laughs> Against um, Common Getterix. Saint Agro and, and, and Saint Agro. Yeah, this is, this robot annoys me because it has all the potential to be decent, and it always just ends up failing. Like I mean, look, I mean, look I mean, at it in Series like, Four. Look what it did to Dreadnought in the previous series. Yeah, it looks so cool in Series Four. In Series Five, the weapon just didn't work for some reason, and led to the possible, which is annoying because it is the fight where it should have been the best fight ever. <laughs> War against Napalm, but no, it ends up being. It, um, it should have been a repeat of Hypno Disc versus Robo Geddon, and it wasn't. Actually, this and, and therefore this thing until um, Foxic versus Mr. Speed Squared came in Series Eight. This was the golden standard of the worst fight of the classic series, in my opinion. Oh. Right. <laughs> I think I think, I think Owen just transformed transformed into the Hulk. Then. <laughs> oh my God. We just. I think he's he's. I think he's dead. He's dying. He's dead. I'm head in the desk. <laughs> okay, okay, let's calm down. Let's talk about Velocity Ripper then. Uh, Velocity Ripper's a thing. Yeah, there's Velocity Ripper, so that's something at least. It just doesn't. I'm, it I'm, just... I'm actually giving myself a headache now. Well done. It's almost uh... over. It's almost over. I mean, I've said before many times that Velocity Ripper's only a claim to fame it's ever done was the very first time it appeared in the football in Series 3. After it was that, it's Demolition done. Demon, though. I know, but no, 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 it's not the fact it beat Demolition Demon, it's the fact that he had the sickest goal ever. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. No, that, that's the achievement, not the fact it beat Demolition Demon 2, but after that, it did nothing. It lost it lost, it lost, lost to Razor in Series 4, it lost to the Alien here. Uh, was it in Series 6? Oh, no, it wasn't, it failed to qualify for Series 6. Then, uh, it failed then... to qualify for Series 6, but it was in the Tag Team Special, which it lost in the first round again. And they also and had Mighty Mouse as well. In series 7, and once again, lost. Yeah, and they had Mighty Mouse, which somehow is more successful than Velociripper. Oh, shut your whole mouth. I'm not going to shut my whole mouth, never. Mighty Mouse is actually awesome. It's it's dumb. <laughs> it's it's it, no. It is Velociraptor's mouse persona. That's literally what it is. <laughs> it's awesomely dumb. It's still one. <laughs> it's, still, it's still one more it's fight. Keep than... finalists, all right? Only because it dodged Chronic enough for it to break down. <laughs> That's the only reason they got to a heat final. And me. that robot would go on to become Apollo. Yes, way better than. Way better than so, what Velociraptor so, ever could so do. So when you think of it that way, Mighty or Velociraptor has beaten a world champion. Technically speaking, yes. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> and actually, for now, I mentioned Mr. Speed Squared. Here's their first robot, Trouble and Strife, who honestly was one of the best first round losers. Yeah, I love this robot so much. I wish they came back with a re revamped version of this yeah. robot so, instead of what we got. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of, a fan of Revenge and Trouble and Strife. I mean, I like the idea of it, but the flipper just never was able to self write it. Um, the one thing I love about this robot, though, is that, I mean, its biggest weakness was the fact the wheels, which seemed to be very hard to control. Like, it just didn't send out much grip or anything. Um, but the one thing I love, and I have to respect the team so much for them, even if they did make Mr. Speed Squared, <laughs> um, is the fact that they managed to fit so much into this small robot. Like, it has a fully operated pneumatic flipper and a giant spinning flywheel, and it's like really tiny and it's under the weight limit. Yeah. It's three, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's actually not, it's 97 kilograms. It, it could have added slightly more weight onto this thing. If they wanted, to. I think personally giving it better wheels would have been a better option. Personally, um, but the fact the thing managed to tussle with Wild Thing, go to a judge's decision, and make it split—that's good going. <laughs> Especially for a newcomer as well. Yeah, and it lo it looks kind of goofy and stupid. And you think, oh, this thing boy just die in two seconds. And against boy like more, ro if it was against something like Firestorm or S3 or something, it might have died. But 
Wild Thing is probably the best opponent to have against it, because Wild Thing can't do too much damage, but at the same time is well, more, well controlled enough to beat Trouble and Strife. But I think if that match went on for another minute, yeah. Trouble and Strife would have won. I mean, they, um, they, broke, they bent one of the wheels on Wild Thing, which is pretty cool, uh, I believe. And, and that flip I got got some good flips on it. So... I'm just impressed by this thing, honestly. I mean, it's just kind of disappointing that they just went for the ring spinner design later on, and then they basically stuck with that design for the rest of their time now. But yeah, well, I mean, it was a, it was an interesting design with Revenge of Trouble and Strife, just not very well thought out. Yeah, it's still a cool design to an extent, but I think as goofy as this thing looks, this is their my favorite robot they've ever made. Yeah, easily. definitely. And with that, of course. That. Even if you can't name a robot Trouble and Strife now, because all well, the feminazis will be after you in a heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> somehow. Because <laughs> Trouble and Strife in Cockney slang is the wife. <laughs> and they're saying, oh, you, you're saying women are green monsters? and uh, Shame on you! Have you not seen women recently? They thought they were green monsters. <laughs> oh, we can't say that on this podcast. Uh. I didn't actually say that. <laughs> No, no, Jamie, you got Jamie Oliver to contend with, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 want, you want feminazis and Jamie Oliver at the same time coming at you. You have, you have, you have carrots one side and placards the other side. You just don't, <laughs> you just don't want it. But, yes, that was Heat D, slightly underwhelming. At least he has some good stuff in it. And, um, yay. I'll be joining you for that Heat, actually, shouldn't I? Yeah, you will be, yeah. I think Alex is also joining me for that one as well, hopefully. Oh, that'll be good. That'll be no. good. I think he booked him for E, so that'll be interesting. I'm saying fuck no to Warhog versus Napalm. Not you, Alex. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't, didn't mean for it to be offensive for you, Alex, but... As, uh, that, yeah. that's, there's going to be a rivalry going on in the next podcast. Alex, you've got, you've got, now you've got Alex coming after you as well. You're making many enemies on this podcast. I just want to end it all. Oh, well, well, I mean, speaking of ending it all, we are at the tail end of the podcast. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yes, um, oh, Owen's dying again. <laughs> with, okay, with that, okay, I'm Jim Dramatic, signing off. I'm the Dominus Ignis, and he's a Wayne. <laughs> hey, bye, guys.